So everyone, hi, I'm Jennifer AC. I am the mayor here in Bernards Township, and I am so excited that you made the time to come. Um, we are here because of our wonderful Somerset County um, Economic Development Office. So Jessica and Ben, who are sitting in the back, they helped to make this possible for this esteemed expert. I will let her introduce herself, <laughs> but I can just tell you, when I spoke just very briefly with Jessica on the phone, she told me about these amazing resources, and and I just said, oh my gosh, we need these here in Bernard's Township. We need these opportunities for our residents that are running small businesses or want to do small businesses. So I'm really excited for this. We're hoping that this is being recorded. That's why I'm talking into this mic, which seems a little awkward. Um, but just wanted just a, a quick couple things. One, if you would be so kind to um, log in uh, your information. I put my business cards over there if you have any questions. My town cards, I should say. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, going forward. Um, we have this wonderful speaker and um, this if you noticed on the logo we also had the BRBA um, that is also a part of this program so we have a representative who will come up at the end and talk a little bit about the importance of the BRBA and hopefully encourage you to become a part of it so with that um, if we can we'll just go ahead and start and let you begin great thank you thank so you. much Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Jessica, for organizing this. And nice to meet you, Ben. You're going to be hearing from me a lot. <laughs> so, so my name is Kathy Guzman. I am a small business liaison with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. I joined the NJEDA about um, 14 months ago, and I vowed to not use any acronym, so I'm really going to try. So NJEDA is New Jersey Economic Development Authority. We are part of the state government. We're a separate authority and our role is to grow the economy in the state of New Jersey. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to give you a really high level overview of the Economic Development Authority, and then we're gonna get into the small business grants. There are several grants that are available, and the good news is, is that there's ample funding in these programs, and they are non-competitive grant programs. That means you meet the requirements, you get the funding, okay? Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about our new capital access fund, high level overview about business banking because it's important to know that we do have banking products, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A, okay? So, oh my gosh, don't read it, so many words. So, so our role at the NJEDA is to grow the economy in the state of New Jersey. We want to grow the economy in a way that's equitable. We want there to be um, clean jobs and clean energy, and let me show you some of our programs here. So across the, the, across the EDA, there's about 42 different programs, okay? So we want to grow the economy um, in clean manufacturing, in high tech, in innovation, in biotech, in professional services. Think about it. Those are all the things that pay good wages and are, you know, in terms of the, the um, environmental impact, pretty light, right? So that's where a lot of our focus is. Um, also, community development is really important to us. Gonna back up a little bit here, oops, here we go. Okay, so these are the different areas where those 42 programs are spread. And if you look at community development, small businesses is under community development, and that's where I work. That's really telling and really important because everybody in this room knows that small businesses are the backbone of a community, and without strong small businesses, you're not gonna have a strong community. So the EDA recognizes that. With, under community development, there are some amazing programs, like a child care center improvement grant. There's programs for food insecurity. Um, there's programs for cleaning up or getting a grant to study um, something called a brownfield, and that's maybe probably I don't know. Probably here you don't have them because you're not really you were never really industrial. But there are sometimes old gas stations or old industrial sites. No one wants to buy them, right? A brownfield grants give somebody money to study that and figure out what needs to be done. That's all part of community development, making stronger, healthier, vibrant communities with good jobs. So that being said, small businesses is under community development, and I think community development is the best organization within the EDA because I get to go out to seven counties across New Jersey and meet with small business owners like you guys, okay? Now, when I say small businesses, do you know that these programs are open also to nonprofits? Not every nonprofit, but a lot of nonprofits. They're also open to home-based businesses, okay? This is our team. There's three of us covering seven, covering 21 counties, seven each, okay? So do the math. 
I work really hard. It is impossible to get to everybody. So that's where you guys come in. Everybody's going to take my card. And even if these programs aren't something that are a match for you, I can guarantee you that you know 10 people who are eligible for these programs. So please help me and share. You're not competing. You're just spreading the word because, like I said, there's plenty of funding. And my challenge and our challenge as a team is just getting the word out to, these folks, to everybody that these programs are available. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Anybody have any questions before I get going? OK, let's do a little show of hands. Um, how many folks have a small business right now? OK, and keep your hand up if that small business has a physical location, an office, a brick and mortar. OK, a bit less. OK, how many are entrepreneurs thinking about starting a small business? OK, great. Is anybody in the tech, innovation, biotech space? No. OK, OK, good. Then I'm not going to just want to know where to go. Um, any nonprofits? All right, great. So I'm going to try to tailor this. Huh? Yeah, we'll yeah you guys are making it easier for me. Just so you know, just talking about you know, um, tech, there is a whole really robust area within the NJEDA for tech startup funding. So just know that. Again, if you know somebody, you know a friend or family who is, is, has a startup, has an idea, has an early stage business plan, that's a whole other area that I don't work in. That's called the innovation team. And there are lots of great um, programs there, too. Yeah, like, like at any kind of um, tech product, a product that has the ability to um, w where the, the company could grow exponentially. So I have a job board, a uh, product for retail jobs. So okay. That, that is run on software. Okay. We are evolving that on a regular basis, but it's more of an employment service than tech, but it is. So I can share information with you, because that's not really my area of expertise, but we do have an innovation team. And I'd just like to point that out. That innovation team has office hours where you can just sign up and go and learn about what they do. So I like to share that as like a big, a, you know, a larger resource for anybody who may be in that startup mode because there, there's some fabulous programs there. I try to understand all the programs, but I, I, it's tough. I know them at a high level, um, but I know these really well, so that's why we're going to talk about these. Okay, so these are the um, grant programs that are open right now. There's three of them, okay, um, a lease grant, an improvement grant, which is really a reimbursement grant, and then an e-commerce support program. So any the um, folks that had brick and mortar, anybody restaurant, retail, personal care? You Okay, great. What kind of? Bakery. Bakery, okay. Anybody else? Okay, okay, great. Okay, so you would be considered um, personal care because that's it's a pretty it's a pretty broad definition, and that would be the e-commerce program. So we're going to talk about that. That's actually my favorite program. The other ones are great too, but we're going to talk about that one in detail. Okay, so small business lease grant. This is open to any business signing a new lease. Okay, anybody signed their lease within the last 12 months? Okay, okay. Is the term of it five years? Okay. Oh, we did. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So this is, it has to be a new lease executed within 12 months. It has to be a five-year term or longer, and it has to be a ground floor space. Sounds a little weird. Post-COVID, we were trying to fill the obvious Main Street vacancies. So that's why that Main Street requirement was there. That being said, it can be Main Street uh, I mean, it can be ground floor commercial, industrial, retail, service. It doesn't matter as long as it's ground floor, okay? And this is a grant that's a rebate, 20% of an annual lease payment for the first two years, okay? So if anybody's looking for a new space, looking to move, if you know anybody that has a business and maybe they're opening a second location, they can apply for this grant. So I have a question, like here in Burns, mm -hmm. so like you stated Main Street, like it's been Leon. Well, these are open to, thank you for asking that, because I, I, I'm sorry, I think I confused you. When I said Main Street, that was the purpose of developing these programs, was to fill those obvious Main Street um, vacancies, but these are open to any small business in New Jersey, okay, anybody. So it doesn't matter if it's a side street, doesn't matter if it's industrial, commercial, any small business in New Jersey. Yep. But the reason for that weird, main, that, um, that weird ground floor thing was because we were trying to address those. From what I understand, it was before my time. They're trying to address those vacancies. So um, open to any small business in New Jersey. Doesn't matter the type of business with the exception of cannabis and, and firearms. And it's a rebate on your 
um, like I said, on your first um, annual lease payment, um, 20%. So that gets you about two and a half months of free rent for the first two years. So very generous, okay? Doesn't apply to everybody. It's a little bit harder to qualify for, but just know it's there, okay? Yes. And, no, you don't have to take notes, and I can even um, I can email the slides. Yeah, I get them to you or to Christine. Um, yeah, um, I, they don't really like me to post them on another website because then they get out of date. But I can e I don't think we have all the information on the website, but not the presentation right now. But I can send it to Christine or. P yeah, everybody, is, make sure your email's on there. And we will email them. Yeah, yeah, or I'll even take a picture of that before I leave, and I'll send every. Does everybody want a copy that's here? Okay, perfect. That's what we'll do. I'll take a picture, and I'll send everybody a copy. Thank you. Have, yeah. Have anybody ever said, no, I don't want a copy? No. <laughs> but I like to ask. <laughs> okay. So the requirements that go along with this, and it's the same for our next grant, um, you have to agree to stay in the space for a certain amount of time, which in this case is five years. Once your grant application is approved, you have to agree to pay anybody on payroll 120% of minimum wage. Okay, so that's moving forward from when your grant application is approved. I like to point that out ahead of time because um, it can be an issue for um, restaurants, specifically um, a few other types of business like large recreational facilities that have a lot of, you know, maybe high school kids on the payroll, that 120% of minimum wage can be tough. Um, but for most businesses, from what I understand, everybody says, yeah, okay. Um, and do keep in mind, you don't have to pay that until your grant is approved and you sign the, um, the agreement, okay? So what you're paying now doesn't matter. That's just a requirement going forward, okay? Uh-huh. Okay. And so if anyone has a question for the recording that they if you would like to repeat it, that way it's captured and then you're answered. We'll do. Going forward. Okay. Perfect. Your presentation with your permission sure. on our website for those that couldn't come. That's great. Thank you. That's great. Okay, thank you. Sure. If you hire a remote employee uh, to do the out of state, don't they have to be New Jersey residents? Okay, so the question was about a remote employee, um, it, if, the, if that counts towards applying for the grant. So um, as long as your business is registered in New Jersey, and if you are, um, and then it does have something to do with payroll, like if everybody was, was if, if your payroll's coming from New Jersey and you're paying New Jersey taxes, then, then you're, okay, yeah. Okay, so that was the lease grant. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on it because I don't think anybody in here is, um, Look, thinking about it right now, but no, it's there. If you, again, any business owners that you know, especially if they're looking for a new space or they're moving, um, that's something they really want to um, think about. The most important thing for them to remember, anybody that's, that's thinking about this grant, is as soon as their lease is executed, they can apply for the grant. So this is important for you to know. They don't have to worry, wait till the build out, the CO, anything. As soon as it's executed, they can apply. And they actually have to apply within those 12 months. So I feel terrible when I meet a business owner who's just opened, but they had signed the lease 13 months ago, and they're out of the eligibility period. So just as soon as that lease is signed, they can apply, which is super helpful to them too because they're getting that capital back when they most need it. Okay, Small Business Improvement Grant. This is our broadest and most popular program. This is open to any small business owner in New Jersey, and again, the ground floor requirement is just for the lease grant. For this, doesn't matter, for a second, third, 20th floor, it doesn't matter, um, commercial, industrial, retail, any type of business, okay? It is a reimbursement grant for any expenses, any improvements done to your business location, okay? So it's tied to the location. Furniture, fixtures, equipment, anything that you do. So think about somebody, if you're renovating your space, those renovations, floor, painting, you know, bathroom, if it's a restaurant, if you're putting in kitchen equipment, um, if it's a, a medical practice, um, you know, the renovations that you do, the equipment that you buy. So for example, a dentist, it would be the dental chair and the drill and all those expensive equipments. A manufacturer, it would be that manufacturing equipment, okay? So it's very broad. As long as the equipment or the work is done at that physical location, it's all tied to your business location, okay? So for a large warehouse, it would be something like their forklift, right? Because the forklift stays there, doesn't leave. So, so there are, um, the grant is very broad, 
and just keep that in mind because a lot of times people see, well, improvement grant, oh, that must be like, they think it's like one project, but it's really not. It's actually a two-year look back from the day you apply, and it can be um, multiple expenses. Okay. Anybody have questions on that? Yeah. Okay, so the question was, if for a home-based business, can you um, renovate your home office? And the answer is no. Okay, so for a home-based business, it's very specific. It's only equipment that you use only for your business. Okay, so exclusively for your business. So it could be your desk, you know, your office equipment, your printer, your computer. Um, I have, you know, spoken to some home-based businesses that were able to actually max out the maximum value of the grant. One was a recording studio. So they had a recording studio in their garage, right? Now, the padding of the garage and making it soundproof, that wasn't eligible because that's attached to the home. But the recording equipment and the computer and the soundboard and the mics and all those things were eligible. So that's an example of a home-based business where they can you know, really max it out. In most cases, the home-based businesses, are, it's just a smaller amount because they don't have as much overhead. Go ahead. Okay, so the question is a home-based business if, um, is a vehicle eligible. So vehicles are not eligible for any type of business. Sorry. Okay. So at this time, what's the turnaround time for what we need for applicants that are submitted? Okay, so great question. So the turnaround time for application. So before we get to that, I'm just going to tell you the, the amount of the award because I don't think I said that. Maximum award is $50,000, and it's a 50% reimbursement. So if you have $100,000 worth of expenses, you get back 50. If you have $50,000, you can get back 25. Okay? It's a two-year look back from the day you apply. The turnaround time from the time you submit your application right now is about seven months. Okay? It's a long wait um, the, because it is our most popular program. That being said, there is ample funding in the program. When your application is submitted, the funding is allocated towards your application. So once you're in the system, we're not going to run out of funding while you're patiently waiting. Okay? So that's the good news. Bad news is you're going to wait a little while. Okay, but um, it depends, you know, sometimes they get processed faster. I like to tell people seven months because then they're pleasant, pleasantly surprised if it's a little faster. But as you can imagine, because we're a state agency, um, we have to look at every single receipt and every piece of, every proof of payment. And there's just a lot of applications because it's such a great program. So it just takes some time to, to process them all. But like I said, ample funding and non-competitive. So worth the time and worth the wait. Plus it's money you've already laid out, right? It's a reimbursement grant. Okay. Um, any other questions before I move on? Go ahead. So let's say I applied today, mm -hmm. got approved seven months from now. Right. Then two years starts up to get, and then two, two years prior to today, or two years prior to the seven months? From so that's a very good question. So when you submit your application, it goes by your application date that you submit. So it's a two year look back from the day you apply. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah, the question was about receipts. And we'll, you know what, I'm going to go into that in a little bit, in detail a little bit more. Okay. Any other questions about types of items that might be eligible? Just double checking. When you said minimum project cost 5000 that would be for, so if you're trying to upgrade, you know, a bunch of things like your computer, your printer, and a bunch of things you're using for business, can that combine? Yes. So that, yeah, that's a great question. So the, the question was about the minimum um the minimum project cost of being $5,000. That means that the, when you submit your application, the total of all your expenses has to be at least $5,000. Okay, so, and, and honestly, it's a lot of work. You, you, you really wanna make it be at least $5,000 if you're gonna take you know, the time to get it all together. It's a great grant, but it's gonna take you some time to put it together. And that's really there um, because with including the home-based businesses, if we didn't have the $5,000 $5, cutoff, I, my personal opinion is we would never be able to get through these grants because there'd be because so, a lot of you know consultants and such have a couple thousand dollars worth of expenses. So that's I believe one of the reasons why that's in place. Makes sense, right? No, there isn't. You can, it, can, it can be as many. You can submit as, I mean, you're going to write a, run out of space on the form, but you can submit as many different things. But supplies that you need to run your business are not eligible, just equipment, right? Oh. Okay. So let's say a printer is an equipment. 
correct. Ink or paper correct. If if the ink came with the printer the first time you bought it, then that, then that's okay, right? But if you are say um, a home based you know, um, I've met several people that do home-based um, cosmetics, right? So, so the packaging materials and the ingredients and things that that is not eligible, right? But if there was equipment needed to package or a label maker or that kind of thing, then that those items are eligible. Okay. So not your raw materials, I guess, is another way to look at it. Okay. Okay. So that minimum co project cost again could can be combined, but it has to be at least five thousand dollars worth of ex expenses in order to apply. Maximum award is 50000 so that means you could have $100,000 or more that you submit. And again, it's across, it's a two year look back from the day you apply. Those dates are really strict. So I would suggest go back, look at your receipts, and make sure you're within that two year period because, because we're a state agency, the dates are the dates, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So you want to make sure that you, you comply with that. So the grant is always 50% of the total? Correct. The grant is always 50% of the total. Now this one, if you are a business that has multiple locations under one EIN, you can combine them and apply for the grant. Okay? Um, this one, like I said, is open to home-based. And the requirement for this one is 120% of minimum wage, like we talked about before, once the grant is approved. Um, and also you have to stay in the space either two or four years, depending on how much money you get. Okay, so if it's $25,000 or less, you're going to be there for, you have to stay there for two years. And that's from the time your grant is approved. So really think about that because it is going to take a little while. So, you know, sometimes businesses choose to be reimbursed that $25,000 and not that fifty dollars because they think, oh, well, I might be moving in a couple years and I don't want to be locked in for that four-year period, but I'm willing to be locked in for a two-year period to get $25,000. So just think about that. So those are really the requirements, but they are because we're a state agency that um, compliance with the wage and requir the requirement and staying in the space is, it's not flexible, okay? Any other questions? Go ahead. Sorry, I just need to use some clarification. Sure. So if it's a two year look back, so that means if you're, say, looking to make a $5,000 investment in your business, mm -hmm. you have to spend the money before you know if you're getting the grant. Correct, right. correct. It's a reimbursement grant. And there, there's no guarantee. I will tell you there's plenty of funding in there, but I can't guarantee that you're going to be approved. So don't buy something just because there's a grant. Okay? Yeah. That's the bottom line. <laughs> buy something that you really need and, you know, cross your I's and dot your T's. And, you know, most likely you'll get working capital back in your business if you're eligible. But, you know, I, there's, no, there's no guarantee there. Yeah. And if there's something that your business really needs, you want to think about purchasing that before you make the application, okay? Because once you submit the application, you can't add anything on, even though you're patiently waiting for five months. And can okay. you use software that might be needed for your business? Software, no, unless it's bundled with uh, the computer that you buy, okay? So some types of eligible items would be like your phone system, your, you know, obviously your computers and your furniture, your renovations to your space, things like your signage out front, improvements to the storefront, right? If you want to put in new windows or um, signage or, you know, if you own the, does anybody own the building that they work out of? No, okay. Just, um, Mayor, so you know, if for business owners that work out of the space that they own, they also are eligible as long as they're the um, business entity is applying for the grant. So in that case, a lot of times it's things like a roof, hot water heater, you know, windows, doors, kind of the more expensive things that you would want to do if you own the, the space that your business operates out of. Okay, so those things are also all eligible. Landlords are not eligible, but if the business owner operates out of that space, then they are eligible for those larger improvements. Okay? Just to elaborate. Great question. Yeah, no. If it's if it's a separate line item, they're going to back it out. But if it's one price and and it's included, which sometimes it is, then they're not going to say, well, your computer's not eligible because it includes the software, right? But if it's if it's a separate line item with the software, then the software is not eligible. Yeah. So the and you could still submit that at that you just back out the, the software cost, okay? Yeah, and that's the same for like marketing costs, um, subscriptions, 
you know, your, your cable, your, your internet, like those ongoing costs, th those types of costs are not eligible, but hard costs and facility improvements are. Okay. All right. Um, landlord's permission is required for any improvements in the space, which makes sense. Now, to apply for this, um, let me go to the next slide here. Okay. So, um, one application per EIN per lifetime of the grant. So that's important. So if you apply this year and then next year you think, oh, I want to do this again, this program only is one application per lifetime of the grant. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, the documentation that you need is going to be your certificate of formation. It's going to be, yeah. No, so the lifetime of this program. I said that wrong. Not the lifetime of the grant, the lifetime of this program. So each business can apply for this program only one time. Okay, yeah. So think about that carefully when you're applying. Um, right now, there's ample funding in this program through 2024. I don't know about 2025. It's in the budget, but the budget has not been finalized yet. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, so to apply, um, I have something called an application checklist that I can share with anybody that's going to apply and it has everything that you need. It's going to be tax returns, your certificate of formation, a payroll report. Is anybody in here a sole proprietor? Okay, so sole proprietors can apply, okay, as long as you're registered with the county. Okay? If you're um, a single member LLC and you don't have anybody on payroll yet, you can also apply. Okay, so you're not disqualified, because that's a question I get a lot. People will get it, it says, oh, I, it needs a payroll report, I must not be eligible. Just upload a note that's saying there's no one on payroll at this point. Now, of course, if you receive this funding, of course, we're hoping your business is gonna grow and you're gonna hire somebody, but it's not a requirement to apply for the funding. Okay? Yes? Uh, what if it's a, it's a New Jersey registered company, but a couple of park owners, they are out of state residents? Is that a no, as long as the business is registered in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And the payroll, I think the payroll has to be coming out of New Jersey. Yes. Yeah, as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And if there are times when, like, a business is actually formed in Delaware, but you have an office here in New Jersey, you can register with the state of New Jersey to be registered that you're, you're operating in New Jersey as well, and then you would become eligible. Okay. I simplified that a bit, but it's kind of high level. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this? Okay, so if anybody is going to apply, I will send you the application checklist, the frequently asked questions, and I will send you a printout, um, not a printout, a, a PDF of what the application looks like online. I find it to be very helpful because you can preview, because you can't get to the next page until you submit the information. So it's just really nice to, to preview it. Don't print it, it'll eat up all your ink but just preview it and it will be very helpful. There's also little, um, <coughs> little call out boxes that explain some of the, the government speak. So when I first started with EDA, I was like, oh, that's what that means. You know, <laughs> like the word facility, I use that a lot. That is really just your business location. That's the word we use within the EDA all the time, depending on, on, for every single program. So now it makes sense to me, but at the time I was like, what does that mean? And sometimes people say, what do they mean by facility? It's really just your business location. So th this um, presentation is super helpful for just kind of those little nuances. So there's plenty of funding through 2024. It's in the budget for 2025. I don't think it's going to go on forever and ever because typically all the programs sunset, but I really don't know at what point it's gonna sunset. I haven't heard anything about it, so honestly, I don't know. How many years have been It's been, that's a great question. So these programs were all developed post-COVID, so since 2020 and 2021. Yeah, so it's been renewed all these years. And there is a, a big emphasis on supporting small businesses within our agency, which I think is really important. But um, they don't let me decide where the money goes <laughs> in which programs. I just get to share the information. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. So um, my home base folks in here, are you, do you think that you might apply? Who's my home base folks? Give me a little hand here. Okay. Okay. All right, we can talk. I'll, I'll stick around after the presentation, too, and talk about a little bit more um, which things could and, you know, may or may not be eligible, or if you want to wait a little while, if there's other things you need to buy. Um, my, my best estimate is that it takes, if you're, if you're organized and a good, good with your books and you have good records, it'll take you, like, four to five hours to get everything together. Okay. If you're a receipt in the shoebox kind of person, it's going to take you longer. Okay. So. All right. 
So next, we're going to talk about e-commerce. Okay. So we had two folks in here that were potentially eligible for this. So this, and again, everybody pay attention because you know somebody who can apply for this program. This is a great program. This is my favorite program for a lot of reasons. Um, the first is that there's no online application through the NJEDI. Okay? It's a grant of services. It's very, very easy to get started with this program. There's also no wage requirement. So this is my favorite program for restaurants because it can really help them a lot without them having to worry about the wage requirement or you know, agreeing to stay in the space for you know, four years or five years. Okay? So this is essentially the ability for a business to upgrade their website. This is only open to restaurant, retail, and personal care with a physical um, retail location. Not necessarily the retail, with a, with a storefront. It actually does have to be retail. You have to be able to walk in and purchase a product or service in order to be eligible for this. Okay? So it can be dentists, doctors, veterinarians, yoga studios, obviously, you know, bakeries, restaurants. It's fairly broad, but it is limited to those who have um, a physical location. And this one, again, was developed post-COVID. During COVID, we, none of us could order from our favorite restaurant. A lot of our retail stores didn't have anything online. And it was really obvious that there was this big gap, right? COVID taught us a lot of things. So this program was developed to help small businesses have another sales channel. Okay? So the value of the consulting can be over $10,000. If a business has a website, it can be an improvement on their existing site. If they don't have a website at all, that's fine too. So it enables e-commerce. That could be the ability to sell your products, your services, make appointments, sell gift cards, whatever it is that you want. Okay. And it could be all of those things, depending on your business. Okay. For restaurants, it could be that um, the ability to online order without having to pay a middleman or a middlewoman, whatever it may be. Okay. So again, um, there's no online application through the EDA. The way a business gets start, started with this program is to reach out to one of the vendors that are contracted with the EDA. There's seven vendors that are contracted with the EDA and you do have to work with one of those vendors. What I always suggest to folks, if you have somebody that runs your website now, bring that person into the fold because I'm sure they'd be thrilled that you could get a new website. Right. So um, again, my favorite program and the, and the EDA pays the consultants directly. So these are all the different things. So website optimization, a new e-commerce platform, online ordering, online appointment booking. Also, very important, digital marketing plan. That is going to include SEO, search engine optimization. Very, very important. That's when somebody goes to look for you, how do they find you? And how do they find you instead of another business? Okay, And that all has to do with keywords, making sure the right keywords are in there, making sure your site has the right security settings. If you don't have the right security settings, then Google's going to put you lower down on the list. There's lots of things that go into that, and this includes all that fabulous stuff. Now, the marketing plan, they won't do the marketing for you, but they'll tell you what needs to be done. And the search engine optimization, of course, is part of what will be in the site and part of that marketing plan. Okay. Any questions about this one before I move on? Okay, again, my favorite program, so no wage requirement, no online application through the EDA, and no requirement that you have to stay in the space for a certain amount of time. So there's a list of consultants. Right here on the back of this flyer is a list of consultants. So what I always suggest to folks is you're really the customer here, and you are paying the bill in a way because it's your tax dollars, right? So do your research, reach out to these folks, ask if they have done a website you know, in your industry, in your type of business, ask for some samples, find out who you're most comfortable with, and then once you decide who you're gonna work with, then that person will put together a proposal for you, make sure everything you want is in there, and then make sure that you're involved and make sure that you get training. Because when they're done, you need to be, you're responsible for updating the website. You could hire the, one of these companies if you want to, but the way, from what I understand, the way their contract reads is that you, that you don't have to use them moving forward. You should be able to update it yourself. Okay? So that's e commerce. Any e commerce questions? Probably not, because you have to have a lease. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. The question was about is, is a Regis shared, uh, what's, I guess that's like a shared space, right? 
Um, I don't believe so because you have to be able to walk into that location and purchase a product or service. So when you walked into that address, it wouldn't really be your branding and your, your service. Yeah. So that's sort of the dis distinguishing feature there. Sorry. You can try, because I'm not sure I don't know the ins and outs. You could call one of the consultants. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that would be a no. But if you want to confirm, you could just pick up the phone and call one of these folks, because they actually do the verification of eligibility. OK? Not at this time. This was our first e-commerce program. It's only been about around a, little, a year. And um, it's a pilot program. So with pilot programs, they always start with smaller um, subsets of, you know, of businesses. Is it going to grow? I don't know. I hope it does, but I don't know. Yeah. So like in the it is just a flag to the thing that is communication. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah, everybody would love this program if we opened up to everybody. I don't know if we could ha have the capacity to, <laughs> to do all the websites, but for now, um, it's working great as it is, but it, it's working really well because it is a smaller subset of businesses, we can, and it's making a huge difference, especially for those um, restaurants and small retail to bring them online. But yeah, I do, that is a, a known, lots of folks ask that, everybody would love it. So yeah, I bring back the suggestions, you know, so which is good. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay. All right. All right. So, e commerce, we're going to move on. I'm going to just do super high level about loans and banking. Okay. Um, so, the, the EDA has loan products. Um, and we also have something called a capital access fund. So that's just something to know in general. If anybody is ever at a point where they're gonna grow their business, they wanna buy a building, they need to buy equipment, we are another resource that a business owner can come to. Okay? So capital access fund is our newest product. This is a fabulous product because this was designed for small business owners. It was designed to fill that gap between um, what your local community bank can do and honestly like predatory lenders right sometimes for a small business there's nowhere to go especially a newer small business right so this is an awesome product um, a business only has to be in business one year and there's no minimum credit score and there's no collateral okay so that's pretty much unheard of at a bank as you could imagine because they have to you know there's underwriters and they have to answer to the underwriters. So this is a way for a small business to get a working capital. So here's a great example. So say you're a small business and you have a marketing company and you get a new contract with a, with a big business, maybe a big pharmaceutical company, and all of a sudden you need to hire three people and, and, and buy new laptops, right? But you're not gonna get paid for two months or three months, right? By the time you put your invoice in, it goes through the whole system. So this is working capital. It's the ability to borrow money, short-term working capital. Okay, working capital by computers, payroll, marketing, whatever you need to run your business to kind of fill in that gap. Okay, um, this is open to any small business um, with less than ten million dollars um, in revenue and less than fifty employees. So this is really for smaller businesses. Okay, and again, this is a place to go when a small business can't. Um, go to a bank because banks want collateral, right? Which makes sense. They need to protect their investment. This is a hundred million dollar fund, fifty million dollars from the NJEDA, and fifty million dollars that originated with the federal government. Okay, so that's a lot of money. Um, it opened just a few months ago, and the way a business can apply is just to go online to that NJCapitalAccessFund.com and you do what's called a pre-application. Okay. So the business, I'm doing this high level because I'm not a banker, so there's a little bit more to it, but from what I understand, a business just needs to be able to demonstrate that they can repay the loan through revenue, okay? And they will even take projections. In the example I gave, a business is about to grow, they have a contract, they'll even take projections um, in order to approve a business for this. This is also open to nonprofits. Okay, so it's a, an awesome program. Um, again, payroll, supplies, um, rent, utilities, marketing and advertising, all those things that you need to grow. Okay, so it's called a working capital loan fund. Um, interest rates are anywhere from eight to 12% depending on risk. So um, just keep that in mind. It's about, it's competitive 
but it's really the ability for a business to get a loan where maybe they can't get it from a bank. Okay, so fabulous product. And please share this one. Um, I, I get upset when I hear about folks that are getting money taken out of their, their, um, their account every month you know, with at 20% interest because they signed a loan when they really needed it and that's what they could get you know, because the lender considered them to be risky. Um, so this is just a great option. So please share it so that people can take advantage of it. Okay, so that's called the Capital Access Fund. Go ahead. Sure, sure. So um, nonprofits, yeah, so this one is open to nonprofits as well. Um, the Small Business Improvement Grant that we covered, the reimbursement grant, that is also open to nonprofits, okay? Um, nonprofits, if they operate like a business, okay? So they have to have some sort of program revenue and they ha most likely they have to have employees, not always, um, but definitely they have to have program revenue. So if it's just straight donations, then they wouldn't be eligible, but if they do operate like a business, then typically they can be eligible. Okay, yeah, and that's the Small Business Improvement Grant. It's the same with the, the Small Business Lease Grant. They're also eligible for that, okay? And then this Capital Access Fund, okay? Okay, so these are our traditional loan programs. These are collateral-based lending, okay? So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on these. Uh, just know that we do have bankers at the NJEDA um, they're like me, they're public servants, so they're there to help you and give you the best information possible. So it's sometimes nice to, if you're really looking to borrow a lot of money, to connect with them. Our premier lender program is, um, we have 24 premier lender banks um, in New Jersey, and that means we partner with those banks. So back to my example with your bank, maybe you wanna borrow half a million dollars, but your bank only feels comfortable giving you 250,000. They can come to the EDA and bring us in as a secondary person on the loan so you can get all the money you need and it brings the interest rate down, okay? So if you are ever you know, talking to your bank about lending, ask them if they're a premier lender because that is something that you should just know about again. Um, our small business fund is um, business um, less than three million um, and that tends to be a very low rate, it's the treasury rate. So it can be a better, a very competitive rate for small businesses, okay? I'm not gonna go into any more detail because I'm not a banker, but does anybody have questions? High-level questions? <laughs> okay. This is just good to know, right? Because most people don't know that this is something that we do. Yep. What's the average interest rate? So the average, so you know, uh, the av okay. Um, so I don't know about the direct loans or the premier lender program, but the small business fund is the treasury rate plus points. Okay. So right now I think that's at like five something. Yep. So it's a, it's a very good rate compared to other rates. Yeah. So that, that's a good one to know about. Anybody else? All right. So just one new program that I wanted to touch on, um, especially because Jessica, because you're here, because this one's this is important, and maybe you, for you too, um, uh, Mayor Jen. Um, there's a new program calling called the Main Street Acquisition Fund, or the Main Street Acquisition Grant Program, I should say. It's opening at the end of this year. And it's the ability for, um, if a business owner is going to purchase the building that they operate out of, they can be reimbursed for the closing cost, okay? So if a business has been operating out of a bill, uh, you know, a space for many years, or they wanna buy, they wanna buy a building to, to put their business in, they can be reimbursed for those closing costs, okay? It's not open yet, it's not gonna be retroactive, so you know, somebody who's closing right now, it's not gonna work, but it's opening soon, and it's a valuable program for small business owners, and that's called the Mainstream Acquisition Grant Program. Okay, all right, that's what's coming soon. All right, so additional New Jersey resources. This is super high level, but I just wanted to share this because there's great resources across the state. So the Business Action Center, that's a separate state agency. They're your pro problem solvers for small business owners. Okay, that's, you. that's where you wanna go. If you're gonna register your business, if you have questions about having your business certified as being women or minority or veteran owned, um, they have tons of tutorials. If you wanna start a business and you're not really sure where to start, you wanna start on this website. There's literally like, so you wanna start a business, you click on that and it says, oh, you wanna be a consultant, you wanna, you wanna you know, um, start a food truck and there's literally books that have all the information. They have something called a small business um, 
Oh, it just came out this week, a small business workbook or small business guide, and it's everything you need to know about starting a small business. So they are really the information resource center for small businesses. Once your business is established, if you want to get into exporting, if you want to find a location in the state, there's people there that can help you with that, okay? Small business development centers are located at all the um, state universities, and they are free consulting and free technical assistance. So maybe you're writing a business plan and you want someone to look at it, or you have an idea on how to expand your business and you expand your business and you want free consulting, that's their role. It's a small business development center. They also have people specialized in different areas, okay? So that's another wonderful free resource. A lot of times people will come to the EDA before they're ready for our grant programs because their business isn't established, they just have an idea, they have a wonderful idea, I will send them to the Small Business Development Center um, and I'll send them to the Business Action Center um, website to learn about registering their business and that type of thing. Um, Women's Center for Entrepreneurship, that's in Chatham. Um, all their programs are remote and they have fabulous online programs about um, learning QuickBooks, learning marketing, um, learning how to register your business. They do a quarterly um, webinar on available grants for women-owned business across the whole country. They just started in person again. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a fabulous resource. Yeah. Um, they do still do webinars as well, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, so that's a gr another great organization, even if you just get on their mailing list to get an idea of the kinds of things that they have. Okay. And then the library, amazingly, I did not know this before I joined the EDA, the New Jersey State Li Library has a small business resource section and there's actually a small business librarian who can help with research and help getting, like, especially if you're looking for competitive information, a lot of journals and things like that you have to pay for and they're really expensive. There is subscription to journals and things like that and some of that data that you might not otherwise be able to get through this library. So another awesome resource. All right, I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? No? All right. Well, I'll stick around for a little while. If anybody wants to ask me anything specific about my business, I'm happy. I mean, about my business, about your business. <laughs> about your business, I'm happy to, to talk to you. And thank you so much for coming. Did she not live up to what we were so excited about? No, thank you so much. That was fabulous. And thank you for staying around to answer questions and, and those handouts. So yes, we'll look forward to getting those. Um, so now, um, before we conclude, we want to speak just briefly about the Basking Ridge Business Alliance. So a business owner and a leadership team member. I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Rana, uh, so I'm a business owner in Basking Ridge. I'm the owner of RG Interiors, and I'm the events chair for BRVA. So I would like to thank you all for coming today. I would like to thank the mayor and KK for giving this opportunity. Uh, I see many members of BRVA are already here and some new faces. So BRVA is a nonprofit organization uh, providing uh, local business owners opportunities of growth by connecting to the local community and as well networking with other business locally. We meet twice per month. Every second Tuesday is our monthly meeting and the fourth Tuesday is our networking night. You can go to our website, check our events calendar. We have some exciting events coming up in May and June. And we, we welcome first-time guests, so you don't have to be a member to come and attend our meetings. Come check us out. We have many members already here, so if you have any questions, just reach to me or I can introduce you to other members. And we'd like to see you in our meetings. Thank you. As we conclude, again, I need to thank our County Jessica, thank you again for your time, um, for suggesting this, and obviously Kathy, you are absolutely amazing. Um, I also want to put in a plug for the uh, BRBA. So um, also thanks to the county, Ben, who is also here. Um, he is related to something called Film Ready New Jersey, and this is something that our town is embarking upon. And um, I needed to provide a list of local businesses that can help support when 
we begin to host film productions within our community. So that's a fun fact that will be coming soon. Uh, we've got some ordinances and some photos and such to take, but we, to become certified, we need to provide a list of businesses. So I immediately contacted Rana and said, please leverage your membership to give me that list. So this is a benefit of being in the BRBA um, because our list is gonna come from them. So if you potentially want to help support film productions, hopefully in the near future, please work the BRBA and get on their list. So with that, I have nothing else. I'm just tremendously grateful for each and every one of you for coming. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our community. And it's important for us to shop local and to support all of those folks. So again, thank you for being a part of it. And thank you for being here and help us spread the word. So hopefully this video will be, it is being recorded. And when it's posted, to please share widely so we can get this word out. I really, really, really want to test Kathy saying that the money is easy to get. <laughs> Grant and it's easy are two, <laughs> I'll clarify, that's not exactly what she said. Although one of them said it was relatively easy to get. I don't know, I heard easy and grant in the same thing. I ample, really, really, ample funding. Ample funding. And that's also two. Requirement to get the funding. Yeah, so assuming that you, do, you meet all the requirements and things, I really want to hear, and, and perhaps maybe we have another session, and then those folks can come up and say, hey, we did this, and we do this again. I'm happy to do that later this year. So I really, really, really want to see something happen. So that's my challenge to each and every one of you. Maybe we'll repeat this again in six months and see where we're at. So would love that. Yes, Evelyn. Sure, sure. I don't know that it'll be recorded on this, but but yes, thank you. Sure. Caitlin, do you want to start? Sure, so I'm Caitlin. Um, I own two businesses that um, are here in local Baskin Ranch. I own the Blue Star Finch Creative Arts Studio that has adult children youth classes along with summer camps, and I just recently opened a sweet shop, which is now the local bakery here in town.
Wonderful. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and um, before you leave, make sure that your name is on that list so then she can send her fabulous slides to you. That's a, that's a real hook. Um, and then obviously she'll be here to answer any questions that you have. So again, thank you to each and every one of you. And let's please help spread this word. And I want to I stay in touch. I want to see like, I want to see what action we get out of this. So fingers crossed. Thank you all for coming. I have flyers up here on all the programs if anybody wants to take them, and my cards are up here as well. <laughs>